Hello friends, welcome to Pioneer of Success, an online free educational institute. So we will be continuing with the WBC series which we have already started and today we will be discussing on Directive Principles of State Policy that is the part 4 of Indian Constitution and the articles contained in this part are article 36 to article 51. This number you should remember because there might be MCQ question from this. And uh, this video is obviously helpful for all WBC aspirants and not only that, whoever uh, preparing for SPSC examinations and other central government equipment examinations, that video would help you. So we request you to share these videos on social media as much as possible so everybody get benefit of it. So before going into details, let me tell about some something about myself. So I am Shishan Mitra. A research scholar of Indian Institute of Technology, Guwahati. Those are my email IDs. You can drop me email and I will be happy to reply to your email or also you can write in the below comment section. We will have a chat in the comment section and we will be solving the issues whichever will be raised. Okay. So, now the main thing you should know before going to detail of article uh, articles uh, is that this, this part of the constitution has been adopted from Ireland because that might be another MCQ question. So now I go to the document. So that has been downloaded from Ministry of Law and Justice, there is the authenticated website under Government of India. So Article 36 uh, says, in this part, unless the context otherwise requires, the state has the same meaning as in the part 3. Now you should know what is there in the part 3 uh, that is also I have mentioned here so in part 3 there is an article 12 and that says about the state and the definition is unless the context otherwise requires the state includes the government and parliament of India and the government and the legislature of each of the states and all local or other authorities within the territory of India or under control of the government of India. So all these things, all these organizations, authorities are included under the uh, definition of state. So again we go to the document. So now article 37 of Indian constitution, it says application of the principles contained in this part. So where do they actually applicable? So the applicability for applicability go to go through the article. It says the provisions contained in this part shall not be enforceable by any court. So that is the main point. That is the main thing of DPSP, uh, and it is that you cannot enforce this articles cannot be enforced in any court of law. So you cannot go to court and say this, uh, the, you cannot say that uh, uh, there are some DPSPs and uh, we are not getting the benefits of DPSP. So that claim nobody can make. But the principles therein laid down are nevertheless fundamental in governance of the country. That means if those are the guidelines. Although these are not enforceable in any court of law, but still you have to follow the articles here in this part to run your governance and to make the laws. It is written here and it shall be the duty of the state to apply these principles in making laws. Then I come to article 38, state to secure a social order for the promotion of welfare of the people. So, in detail it is given, I am not going through it, you can pause and just read it. Then comes article 38, state to secure a social order for the promotion of welfare, okay, um, and I have just told it. So now we come to article 39, that is certain principles of policy to be followed by the state. So. The maker of constitution they have given certain policies and that and those policies have to be maintained have to be followed by the state here state means the parliament the legislature and other authorities who may, who make law and who are associated with the government of india as we have stated earlier so 
what are the guidelines those are that the citizen men and women equally have the right to an adequate means of livelihood so we cannot deny anybody to uh, we cannot deny anybody any rights because of their uh, caste creed sex uh, and all these things so it is given as a guideline then the ownership and control of the material resources of the community are so distributed as best to subserve the common good so that is another article that another guideline then the operation of economic system does not result in the concentration of wealth and means of production to common detriment then d that there is equal pay for equal work for both men and women we cannot uh, give uh, less amount to women for the same work so this is another guideline and then that the health and strength of workers men and women and the tender age of children are not abused and that citizens are not forced by economic necessity to enter avocations unsuited to their age or strength what does it mean it means uh, we cannot force any uh, force labor that means uh, we cannot put any child under any hazardous location for any work because it is not written in the constitution okay so then we move forward the children are given opportunities and facilities to develop in a healthy manner in conditions of freedom and dignity and that childhood and youth are protected against exploitation and against moral and material abandonment so this is very clear you can understand we have to protect our child our children so the, that is the main point so then article 39a clause a equal justice and free legal aid so we have to give equal justice to every citizen of india and free legal aid if anybody is not competent enough to and that means he or she does not have money then we have to support them to give him or her justice so what is there in the article basically the state sh shall secure that the operation of legal system promotes justice on a basis of equal opportunity and shall in particular provide free legal aid by suitable re legislation or schemes or in any other way to ensure that opportunities to securing justice are not denied to any citizen by reason of economic or other disabilities that means even if people are not able to people not able to pay money but still we have to give them justice so that is the main point okay now article 40 that means organization of village panchayat the state shall take steps to organize village panchayat and endow them with such powers and authority as may be necessary to enable them to function as units of self government so uh, we have made self government by panchayat in the village and uh, we have to give them proper authority so that they can run their self government that is the main thing then article 41 right to work to education and to public assistance in certain cases the state shall within the limits of its economic capacity and development make effective provision for securing the right to work to education and to public assistance in cases of unemployment old age sickness and disablement and in other cases of undeserved one that means uh, we have to maintain a proper development by giving economic economic support and the health support to the citizen of india that is the main thing then article 42 provision for just and human conditions of work and maternity relief so it is clear it is clear the state shall make provision for securing just and human conditions and of work and for maternity relief the same thing is the repetition of same sentence then 43 living wage etc for worker the state shall endeavor to secure by suitable legislation or economic 
organization or in any other way to all workers agricultural industrial or otherwise work a living wage conditions of work ensuring a decent standard of life and full enjoyment of leisure and social and cultural opportunities in particular uh, cultural opportunities and in particular the state shall endeavor to promote cottage industries of an individual or cooperative basis in rural areas that mean overall the concept is we have to give minimum living wage to every citizen and workers and we have to take care of their condition that means uh, it is given here we have to have proper legislation so that we can give them living wage uh, we can support the agricultural uh, worker the industrial worker and all them and we should ensure that they should live a decent life so that is the main part decent life standard then article 43 a participation of workers in management of industries i am skipping it then uh, article 44 says about uniform civil code for the citizens that is very quite uh, clear i am not explaining it in details for article 45 provisions for early childhood care and education to children below age of 6 years that means we should give proper education and compulsory education to the children so that our state our country grow Article 46 says our promotion of educational and economic interest of scheduled caste, scheduled tribes and other weaker sections. That means we have to take special care for these classes. That means scheduled caste, scheduled tribes and other weaker sections. The state shall promote with special care the education and economic interest of the weaker section of the people and in particular of the scheduled caste and the scheduled tribes. And shall protect them from social injustice and all forms of exploitation. So the thing is, they have been exploited a lot before. So now we have to give them a proper life, life condition. We have to protect them and we have to give them proper education so that we can promote them and we have to give them education for their economic interests. So these things are clear. Article 47 say, uh, says about duty of the state to raise the level of nutrition and the standard of living and to improve public health. It is, this is very simple. You can go through the entire article. I am not going in details. 48 says organization of agriculture and animal husbandry. That means uh, we can promote these things so that we can uh, we can make we can generate employment and we can uh, we can do improvement for the weaker section of the people. Article 48 clause A says protection and improvement of environmental and safeguarding the, of the forest and wildlife is quite natural. 49 says about protection of monuments and the places and objects of national importance. So the thing is we, we have several uh, heritage buildings, monuments, everything and we should protect them. We should have proper law in order to protect them. We have to take care of the pollution level and everything that is given by the constitution. Article 50 says about the separation of judiciary from executive. This is a very much important part of Indian constitution. But as it is written in DPSP many times, we mix up executive and judiciary. But main thing is judiciary should not interfere in the work of in the function of executive and the vice versa so we have to implement it properly i don't know how uh, how far it has been implemented but now it the time came to implement these things okay so article 51 this is the last article of this part promotion of the international peace and security so state shall endeavor to Promote international peace and security, maintain just and honorable relations between nations, foster, uh, foster respect for international law, law and treaty obligations in the dealings of organized people with one another and encourage settlement of international disputes by arbitration. So the things are now clear, uh, few more things are left. So we have basically classified this. I will tell you, this part has been classified in three fonts and those are socialistic, 
Gandhian and liberal intellectual directives. So in socialistic directives we have those articles, article 38, article 39, article 41 and article 42. As uh, we have already mentioned, article 38 tells about the securing welfare of the people. Article 39 says about securing proper distribution, material resources, community the best uh, to best subserve the common good, equal pay for equal work, protection of childhood, youth against exploitation, etc. Uh, curing right to work, this is Article 41. Securing just and human condition of work and maternity relief, Article 42. So all these things comes under socialistic directive because for the betterment of social society, we have been implemented it, we have been given in the DPSP for the society. That, that is why it is socialistic derivative. Now the Gandhian derivatives are uh, taken from the Gandhian principle. So those are Article 40 that talks about the organization of village panchayat, Article 43 uh, to secure living wage, decent standard of life, Article 45 that is the compulsory education to children up to 14 years of age, Article 46 to 48 to promote economic and educational interest for the weaker section to enforce the prohibition of intoxication of drinks, cow slaughter and to organize agriculture, animal husbandry on scientific lines. All these things are, com are coming under Gandhian directives and the last one is the liberal intellectual directives and uh, the articles in this section are article 44, article 50. Uh, it is about principle among such the directives are to secure uniform civil code as I have already mentioned before in article 44 and uh, to separate the judiciary from the executive that is a, that is the, that is, that is a very important part of this constitution uh, we have to take care of this article 50 uh, so that we can implement it in a more better way in a better way and to protect monuments and historic and national importance heritage buildings to promote international peace and security all this comes under liberal and intellectual directives so question may also come from these things how many directives are there? So we now, um, by the time we know, socialistic directives, Gandhian directives, and liberal and intellectual directives. So all these things you have to take care of. And uh, in this video, we with this video we end here. Uh, I request you to share this video so that people can learn. And thank you for uh, watching. And please subscribe to my channel. I will be uploading more videos on Indian quality and on other subjects as well.